grateful to you. Enjoy. Mm. It's the perfect TV dinner on a cozy day. <laughs> With cozy you. <laughs> You're cute. <laughs> mm. <laughs> you see? <laughs> that is so much better. So much better than the original recipe. So I came up with this because yeah, it's so good. I can eat this all day. It is my favorite pasta. And I came up with it because I had this favorite soup. Well, you, you know the favorite soup. It's the one that's always in the fridge. It's the red pepper tomato. Oh, it's, it's like, it was like ambrosia of the gods to me. It's delicious. And so like a fool, I spent my entire life jazzing up that soup. So first I obviously started by just drinking it. Like I may as well just chugged it by the carton full. I didn't, I heated it up, but like I may as well have. Would have saved me some time. But <laughs> then I started jazzing it up, you know, um, throwing in different spices and maybe different proteins and, you know, making it fancy. But then <laughs> right before we moved in together, I discovered I can use it as a sauce. With all the jazzing it up I was doing in the form of soup, I realized that if I poured it over pasta and jazzed that up and heated it up, you know, all the cooking chemistry and what have you, I'm very impressive. <laughs> and it could be a sauce. Oh my gosh. And it never disappoints. And that, this discovery is relatively new. So lucky for you, <laughs> together, we can explore all of the different ways in which <coughs> we can make fancy sauces for foods. Um, obviously pasta is a given. Ah, I feel like this would be good over anything. I mean, really? Hold on, I need to drink some water. Oh, it's a little spicy. Ah, <laughs> oh, that's so good. You are... Such a lucky roommate. <laughs> yeah, you're really cute too. You got a little something right above, um, oh, it's right above your lip. I don't know what we're gonna do about that. I don't have a clue. It's too bad you don't have a girlfriend here because as your roommate, I couldn't possibly get it. You taste like pasta. <laughs> I know I do too. It's not a bad thing. It was just, I didn't think it through and it, it surprised me. <laughs> I have something, I have something to tell you. It's not a big deal. Um, it's just, for clarity's sake, because communication is important. You were right about the calendar. Um, I did, I crossed some things off and I didn't mean to make it like shady. And, and I appreciate the fact that you trust me nonetheless, but it was just a really awkward thing to tell you that I'm actually, I'm, I'm actually supposed to be spending time with my parents right now. And that's awkward because I, not that I would rather spend this time with you. I would always rather cozy up to you, you know? You're my happy place. And I think it's just really, I don't wanna say embarrassing that my parents aren't, but it feels like, you know, we've been, we haven't really dated in, a way in which I'm used to, you know, and there's um, <clears throat> generally some like a vetting process when you meet the person, you go out one time and it's sort of like a little interview, you know, it's a hopefully a playful, fun interview, but an interview nonetheless. And slowly but surely, you know, you go, you, you ask the pertinent questions and you're slowly getting to know who they are on like a, a values level and ethics level. 
a, a lifestyle level, a what do you want for your in your future level, like a compatibility romantic level fresh out the gate, right? But in our case, we got to know each other really, really well. So I, I'm not saying that we don't, but we got to know each other really, really well as friends. And we got to know each other really, really well as roommates. Now, fortunately, we thrive in both of those departments and both of those departments are relevant to dating. But I feel like <clears throat> there's some there's some pertinent information that we, I don't know that, I don't know that it's fair to say we skipped, but like the chronology of our dating experience is a little unpredictable for me. You know, typically people <laughs> will figure out the roommate part of dating way later. <laughs> and the friendship part oftentimes kind of, well, I guess that's a give or take, <laughs> but I was hesitant to tell you just because I know that some people, some people perceive uh, a, a, a lot okay how do I put this a lot of people perceive oh my gosh I love my family as a green flag you know that is a such a wonderful sign that they're from a happy healthy family but that's just I feel like that's a really unfair expectation but I get it you know I think odds are probably stronger that a person knows how to treat other people if they're from a family that educated them well and how to treat other people well you know that's Therein lies the foundation of a happy, healthy family. It's a group, group of people that is good to each other. And so, you know, a lot of people when they're born into families otherwise, when they're born into families that don't know how to treat their families well, or, you know, generally anybody well, I feel like it, it will make or break a person. They'll either, you know, become like their family and pay that forward, um, you know, and proceed about the cycle, or they'll break that generational trauma, um, or they'll, you know, break the cycle and ambitiously pursue being the person they wish they'd had in their lives. You know, they, they'll ambitiously pursue being, to be the adult they wish they had had, or to be the friend that they wished they had, or to be the sibling they wished they had, you know, that's, and that's people, that's me, you know, and this is why <clears throat> number one reason I, I've been loving therapy is for the most part, that's what we talk about is me trying to understand, okay, what are some, what is some conditioning that I am unaware of that has resulted from my family dynamic, things that I thought were normal, but are not. And then identifying how that may have affected the way I either receive, um, people treatment from people or deliver treatment to people and then analyzing how you know I can go about you know after I've identified you know potential obstacles or potential threats obliterating them <laughs> like Star Fox 64 <laughs> I know this isn't a funny topic of discussion but you're just so much fun <laughs> it's a good thing So that's why I, that's why I was shady because I just didn't want you to feel like maybe that was a huge red flag that I don't really like my parents. And as a matter of fact, I don't really like my whole family. I am very much sort of I'm very very different from them. You know, they all function they all function on the same on a, they all function on the same level. I think For the, at the very least a very similar level. And I very intentionally don't. I mean, I love them. I care about them. You know, like there have been times in which I've heard people, you know, talk smack about a family member here or there. And I have seen red, you know, like I'm not going to let anything bad happen to them. I will protect them with my life. But I also would never choose to spend time with them. Otherwise, I prefer not to socialize with my family. And I was scared to tell you that because, you know, like I said, there are a lot of people that would say, "Uh oh, <laughs> watch out for her. And I know we know each other so well, but I feel like, I don't know, baby. I worry on occasion that maybe we missed, that we missed some stuff having not dated before we, you know, pronounced romantic engagement. You know, the fact that, I know that sounded very proper to bear with. <laughs> You're very sweet. 
I like talking to you. I've always liked talking to you. I just worry on occasion that maybe, you know, the whole dating process, you know, maybe it's not a matter of having, you know, rearranged the chronology of getting to know each other. Maybe we missed some experiences. And I worry a little bit too, you know, there's, there's so much lore about, you know, how to ensure successful relationships. And one of, you know, an old study that came out screamed, do not live together. <laughs> um, they did a study on a number of different married couples and they came to discover that the bulk majority who had lived together before getting married wound up getting divorced. The theory, well, I'll, I'll get to why this, this study may not be incredibly sound, but the theory that I believed for quite a bit was that oftentimes if you start out by moving in with someone, you're gonna have a different, okay, well, I think, I'm sorry, this pasta is really good, hold on. I held it up to my face and then I, I held, I stopped to talk to you and I smelled it, just, in promotion. <laughs> Anyhow, and they asked, they asked these couples. So I, I guess maybe they did a restudy or they brought in a second study or I forget, I would have to look into how exactly they went about this whole study, but um, they asked people to write down lists in regard to their expectations for a roommate, as well as expectations for a, a, a spouse. And the roommate list was significantly less demanding than for one of a spouse, understandably. And so the theory is if two people get to know each other as roommates first, um, when they get married, when they decide to commit, they'll both have new expectations for each other that they're either just simply at this point not conditioned to meet or perhaps, you know, the, the people, that significant other that you now have, you know, commitment expectations from and, you know, marriage, that was poorly worded, <laughs> marriage expectations from was never able to meet those expectations. You know, maybe this person always would have been better as, you know, a, a wonderful short story romance. You know, somebody who was a wonderful roommate and a wonderful romantic interest, but you know, you were never meant to go the distance. And you would know that, but, but then of course, you know, the other question is, well, like the same goes for what if you're really great, you're really great friends and romantic interests, but then you move in together and you realize you're incompatible in a space, you know, and that's the counter argument. But, but a really great argument I heard once was from a friend who said like, what was the demographic of these studies? You know, is it look at it, couples who move in together before marriage, oftentimes it's for financial purposes. So that may have not even been a choice of agency. It may have been a choice of convenience. So already you're looking at couples who are together that prioritize convenience as opposed to couples who are together because they prioritize matrimony. You know, it was just, there were too many questions in regard to the specifics of the demographics, right? <clears throat> so who knows? <sighs> but I know, I'm, I promise I'm not, I'm not <laughs> pitching that we put a ring on it <laughs> but, today, but <laughs> I'm just trying to make you sweat, but it's not working. <laughs> You're too sweet. Oh, shoot. <laughs> but anyhow, I just worry a little bit that maybe we missed some, you know, getting to know each other opportunities that would only come out of dating and maybe even expectation opportunities, you know, setting the bar for each other where we're both, where we both expect those. <laughs> I guess standards as far as how we both feel we deserve the word is the how do I put this without sounding entitled basically <clears throat> everybody I feel ought to have standards in regard to how they feel they ought to be treated right and then you find people who <clears throat> can um, and are capable of and happy to treat you in the way that you would expect to be treated you know and that's part of the whole matchmaking process is finding people who share um, <clears throat> who share those values, who share the same idea of what a reciprocal relationship looks like, what a symbiotic relationship looks like, um, you know, when those standards meet each other. And I mean, I know we make each other really happy. 
And I guess so long as we're making each other feel happy and we don't stress each other out and we treat each other really, really well, you know, that's the point. <laughs> you know, how could we possibly be messing this up? But I worry on occasion that maybe is it possible we're selling ourselves short by not having gone through the dating process, you know, by not going on that first date and <laughs> scouting what each other wore and <laughs> sleuthing topics of discussion and, you know, testing, you know, respecting of the boundaries and <laughs> all the things people have to do in order to protect themselves and understand that they're going to be safe with one another. But in our case, you know, clearly, we've understood for some time we feel very safe with one another so maybe bypassing that was very natural and very reasonable for us but i just you know and on top of that like let's say all that has worked out in our favor i do wonder if maybe we missed out on some opportunity to build some really nice memories of going out you know, going out and surprising each other and impressing each other. And, you know, we, we let's say I, I take you to salsa and you say, whoa, who knew? <laughs> she had those moves. And, or maybe, you know, you show up wearing something fine and I say, that is in your closet. <laughs> show me more, <laughs> you know? I just worry that maybe we missed out on memories and pictures and, and um, milestones and, places you know that become our spot like ooh, that's the you know the coffee house that we had this particular important discussion about this is where we talked about your you know your family i guess it's all still in my mind Ugh, everything goes back to family you know how it is i just worry that maybe even though we're having a really great time and i always always really really like you and i i don't regret a thing I don't regret any of the choices we've made. I just am a little concerned that maybe we've missed out on some experiences we also could have enjoyed together, that's all. But maybe it's not too late. <laughs> yeah, maybe we date a little bit, maybe. No more, no more of my fancy pasta for just like a minute. Maybe we go out, we explore our town, we find our spots, <laughs> we get all dressed up, we surprise each other. You know, maybe we both um, drive in separately and <laughs> kind of play as though we're dating for the first time a little bit. You know, naturally we come back here, but <laughs> I wonder if maybe that would be really fun too. And I think we would get to know each other better as well. I mean, that's the beauty too of dating out is every time you explore a new environment, you're gonna learn something new about that person. Like if you were to say, I don't know, uh, take me on like a, I don't know, a, a boat tour of some sort. Suddenly I'm talking to you about my knowledge of Shark Week or let's say I take you out to, um, I don't know, a bowling. <laughs> bowling and then suddenly you're you know telling me stories about when you were in junior high and you bowled for the first time and got a strike like I think maybe there are a lot more stories in us that can be told specifically out on the town and that's not to say I haven't been enjoying getting to know you you know behind closed doors of course I have but we know each other really really well in fact most of these stories that people would learn on dates were probably already well aware of but I just feel like I feel like it would make me feel more at ease <laughs> to have done the dating thing too, to get to know you in that environment. Cause that's the funny thing about dating too, babe, is you don't know me in a dating environment. It's very possible that, you know, you think I'm so cool <laughs> so often in this environment, but then if we go out, like, you have no idea if I'm if I'm rude to you know if I'm rude to strangers or like catty or jealous or just awkward like you don't I don't think you know enough about me in regard to who I am interacting with you know other people in the the, the outside world outside this cozy bubble we've created which I'm so grateful for but I feel like if I feel like I just really want us to get to know each other 
even better. And I think we deserve all of the wonderful memories we can get. And I think I'm feeling playful and I think this would be fun. So eat up <laughs> because date night won't be in for a while. However, I don't know. I guess we can probably still do breakfast together. <laughs> Maybe we'll sort the details. We'll figure it out. <laughs> I had a really, really good time tonight, by the way. And I don't want you to, I don't want you to confuse the suggestion about dating for, for apathy to these, you know, like I, I certainly consider dinner together this evening for example a date and i really like it and i really like you so this is not coming from a place of lack that i'm suggesting a little bit of traditional dating it's coming from a place of i think that you and i deserve i think we always deserve more <laughs> And yes, this was so much better than spending time with my parents. Oh my God, I... <laughs> and I can't finish that statement. <laughs> nope, not today. You'll just have to think on it. What was I about to say? You'll just have to think on it and you'll have to find out as we date. <laughs> I know I'm torturing you. Here, have a bite. <laughs> Shh, just enjoy the pasta. Shh. <laughs> it's so good well then oh no <laughs> what if you break up with me because i stopped making pasta for a while or <clears throat> what if you find a restaurant that makes you know, a similar if not identical dish of pasta and that i'm i'm it's over isn't it it's done you only like me for my pasta <laughs> <laughs> don't poke me <laughs> <laughs> hey you cute one who makes me happy <laughs> you want to cuddle up a little bit <laughs> come here <sighs> you're so comfortable <laughs> yeah I always feel safe with you. Thank you. Don't do not block my range of motion though. <laughs> this bowl does this bowl look empty to you? How many arms do I have? <laughs> bon appetit. <laughs>